Uh, hello there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Maria Does Stuff here on Floss 2 coming to you on this Saturday. Yeah, that's a little weird for me. Um, October 16th, 2021 with an update video. It's been a while since I've done an update video. Um, it's been a, just a few weeks since I've done any kind of video at all. Uh, and so I thought, well, now's a great time. Um, there's a whole bunch of retreats happening this weekend and the FOMO slash ICIMO. <laughs> um, ICIMO was, was coined by Arlene Cohen, uh, works by ABC. Um, and it stands for, you know, you're missing out. Um, it's real. It's real this weekend. There are so many retreats happening and, uh, I am stalking all of the pictures and everything happening on Instagram. Um, so I am not at a retreat, so i film a floss tube today. Uh, we were supposed to go to the pumpkin patch this morning, but as it turns out, Baby Does Stuff, her sort of like window of being awake has widened out a little bit, but we are still one activity. <laughs> we're still one activity out of the house at a time. So we started with breakfast and um, it became very, very apparent that that was all we were going to get to do uh, this morning. So we'll try the pumpkin patch maybe tomorrow. Um, so yeah perfect timing, right? Everything else falls apart, so why not film a floss tube? Before I get into everything that I'm, everything that I've got to show you today, I just want to say welcome. Um, since the Whip Parade, there's been quite a few new people who have joined the channel, and so welcome. Thank you so much for, for subscribing and for checking out my channel. Um, thank you all so, so much for watching that Whip Parade. And for um, for all of your comments and for participating in JMDS Whip Parade 2021, that's just <laughs> that just makes my heart so happy. Um, just seeing everything that y'all did. Uh, most everybody stitched, but I had a couple of people who cleaned their living rooms or folded some laundry. Somebody showed me that they did some dishes. Hey, I mean it was two and a half hours, so that's a big chunk of time to get a lot done. Um, but thank y'all so much for, for playing along with that and for watching that, that big old movie. Um, I was editing it and I was like, wow, Jesse's looking tired. <laughs> if you, if you fat, if you compare my appearance at the beginning of that video and the end of that video, I aged like 15 years <laughs> in that two and a half, in that two and a half hour span. Um, yeah, cause it was an all day affair and, uh taking care of the little one and uh, just, you know, it's an all day event. So uh, that was kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, just th thank you. Um, and also, I mean, of course, welcome to everybody who's been with me for uh, since day one or day, uh, I don't know, 700 and something. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it during the parade, but um, I celebrated eight years here on Floss 2. Uh, in August, early August, uh, was my eight year floss tube anniversary. And that's just, that's just so cool. I have owed you guys some sort of a celebratory giveaway and I still don't have that organized. Um, so <laughs> we'll hold off on that, um, until next time. Um, because you know, I just don't have that organized right now. Um, I just, I kind of threw this together a bit last minute. Um, so there you have it. Uh, so all of the things that we do have to talk about, I'll be honest, not a whole lot. I have a few projects that I've worked on. Um, but <laughs> if I'm honest, my dark October stitching, despite the fact that we're over halfway through the month already, which is just not even cool. Um, I don't have a whole lot to show you in dark October, which is weird, but we'll get there. Um, and then I have a ton of haul and, and new stash. I was going to just put some of this away um, and not show you all of this, but it's fun, stash share. So I'm going to show you everything that I have collected here. It's not everything that I've purchased over the many months uh, since I've done a, like a true update, um, but it's, it's a fair bit. Expo is in here and more project bags because I have... I have a problem, <laughs> uh, and you know, 
etc. So I will I will show you some stash uh, and plans. I don't have a whole lot in the way of plans, so but we'll talk about it. So um, let's go ahead and let's get started, and we'll start talking about some works in progress, um, some things I have worked on since the whip parade. So while I was filming the whip parade. Uh, and also in a couple of days afterwards, I was working on this project here. Um, this was for Sampler September and Sampler September Soiree. Um, the distinction there is that Sampler September is kind of anything that's samplery, and Sampler September Soiree is true reproduction samplers. Um, so antique needlework reproductions. Uh, so this is Elizabeth Biggs. 1833 by GGR, and I had a blast working on this. I really, really liked it. Uh, I, I'll be honest, after the whip parade, I, I took a few days off stitching between the editing and the getting used to the new software. Um, just, just to put this out there, I am using Final Cut Pro now on our, on our iMac, and it's, it's got some similarities to iMovie, but it's also got some major differences uh, that took me some getting used to. If anybody is proficient in Final Cut, Cut Pro, if you could, like, message me and let me know, I might have some questions lingering. But anyway. Uh, so this is on a 40 count Newcastle Linen in Legacy by Picture This Plus. And when I started this last year, I started it for September Sampler. Sampler September 2020. Um, I, I had big question marks about this fabric. I was not sure if I was doing the right thing. And I now am obsessed. I'm loving this a whole lot. So this is where I got to. Uh, after a few days, I get this question all the time. What's with the threads that are hanging? So that's, that's parking. I park on basically everything. Um, because I like to stitch things in a certain order and, but I don't really want to like, for instance, with these leaves, so like this one here, I like to do the gold outline and then the lighter green and then the inner green and then the lighter green and then the gold after that. I like to stitch my way down. So instead of tying off and then reattaching to do the rest of it, I just leave it there and then later I'll go through and do the rest of the leaf and then do the the bottom part of it with that so that's why I do that and that's the whole purpose of it I just like to park anyway this was a lot of fun uh, this is using all of the called for threads uh, it's a mix of gentle art sampler threads and weak dye works um, including four skeins of cucumber no five skeins of cucumber that I was finally able to track down. Um, but these are these are all of the gorgeous threads. Even a blue in there. Oh yes, I love this one. Lots of greens and my personal favorite. Um, where'd you go? There we go. Forest Glade. Arguably my favorite general art sampler threads. So let's do the thing. Let's do the thing with the threads on the fabric. Yep. Love, 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 love this. So much fun. Um, I wanted to get page one done. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, um, but I really, I wanted to get page one done. Uh, but I also couldn't continue working on this for much longer. Uh, I worked on it a total of like three or four days and anyway, it's gorgeous anyway. So. That is Elizabeth Biggs. Going forward, I would really like to each September and October, but since we're talking about September here, I would like to have a sampler September finish and a sampler September new start every September. Uh, and then Similarly, in October, a new start and a finish relating to Dark October. So, I wasn't going to get a sampler finish this year because I didn't have anything that was close, and all of the samplers that I have on the go currently are huge. So, I decided to have a new start, uh, and it was this gorgeousness. This is Marianne Aldred, 
by Needlework Press. This was an exclusive through the Homespun Needlework Facebook group, um, and then they collaborated with a shop to offer this. It's no longer available um, as, as a shop exclusive or a Facebook group exclusive. Um, I'm sure that eventually you'll be able to get these secondhand, but um, currently it's just these ones. Um, the cool thing about this, this sampler is not only is it pretty little, um, but they charted two versions of the swan, one with the swan's mouth closed. Um, why they did that, I don't know. I'm assuming to make it look a little less menacing, um, but nonetheless. So this is really cool. It's got some four-sided stitch for her name. She did her name in four-sided square stitch, as well as her age, um, and some over one sections. And they offered a kit, and the kit came with chart, um, fabric, threads, and a thread keep. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and so I got, I'll just show you um, where I got to. I worked on this for a couple of days. Um, the fabric is a 40 count um, vintage country mocha Newcastle linen from Zweigart. And it's just a little sampler. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little one. Uh, and so I got started, and I wanted to play with as many colors as I possibly could, so I managed to work my way into this first tree here. So let me show you the threads that are all classic color works. Again, a gorgeous mix of very warm, neutrally things. Lots of green, which I am not mad at. Um, and then the thread keep from Sampling of Memories. It's a little mini version of the sampler. And then a button and some stark scissors. Little, little charms to go with it. So this was my first ever thread keep like this. And that's dangerous. Um, <laughs> if there are things I can collect, that's dangerous. But anyway, so... Let's do the thing. Gorgeous. So pretty. How are my threads already all messy? And it's upside down. That's okay. Anyway, so that is Mary Ann Aldred. And so this is something that I could potentially finish next year because it's fairly little. Um, and uh, so I can try to keep that trend going of a finish and a new start. Over the course of the whip parade, I kept referring to, I referred to Zombie Run several times. And uh, at this point, I had only worked on, I think, one of the pieces that I needed to for Zombie Run. Uh, so for the last few days of September, I was like, all right, I got to focus. I got to work on some Zombie Run stuff. So the first one that I pulled out, living in this beautiful bag, is my elephants, of course. A crowd favorite from you all. And here's a really, um, a portion of what it will look like finished. There's a little bit more in either direction, but this is torn out from the book. Um, because I'm a heathen and I tore it out of the book. That's fine. Um, and so I pulled this out to work on. And I'll be honest, I work on, the, on this a lot. I think, I think the last few days of September I spent on this. Um... Stitching was slow because I was in a funk. I don't know why. Um, but I got I got a fair bit done. I won't... I'm not too disappointed in how much I got done. So I'll show you the whole thing and then I'll kind of close up close for the part that I focused on. Oh, so good. This is a 32 count linen in aqua from Fabric Flare. And I focused on Big Tony over here. So I gritted my way up and then worked my way over to the corner. So this is as far over as, as we'll go here. And originally I was planning on just working enough to get his ear done. Um, except for that thread that I am out of. Uh, but... I ended up working on him for a lot more than that. Um, I guess I just wasn't in the mood for switching anymore. 
And I ended up not never getting to my other zombie run pieces. But it's okay. I'm not too I'm not too stressed about it. I am not in love with the way that his eye turned out. And I think it was a long time ago, it was like 2016, when I finished the baby elephant's eye. And I backstitched. I back, backstitched her eye. So I think I'm going to have to do the same for his eye to try to make that look a little better. This pattern relies pretty heavily on some quarter stitches. And for the most part, it's not a big deal. Like it, it definitely makes the, that smooth, right? But there are some places where I might need to go back and do some back stitching just to try to even things out. Um, one of the major spots that I'm concerned with is the baby elephant's trunk in front of mama's leg. So I may have to go through and do some, some detail work at the end. Yeah, and like Big Tony's ear, he needs, he needs some delineation there. So, that is Elephants. I know y'all love this one. Um, this one will be a bittersweet finish for sure. For sure. We are ripping right through this. So, that brought me to the end of September and then it was time for Dark October. Oh, I have been so ready for October. It doesn't feel like October here yet, so I don't feel like we're there yet, which is frustrating because we've got two weeks left. Uh, but it's it's going to cool off here. Um, I think today is probably our last day in the mid-80s, and then we'll start to cool off a little bit. Anyway, Dark October. So here for it, so ready for Dark October stitching and all of the fun stuff that this month is bringing. So, I had two goals amended down to just one goal for what I was going to accomplish this month, and that was to finish Haunted House by Clouds Factory. Preview there of what it looks like, <laughs> because I did finish it, but I don't have it with me. I took it to the framer. Me. Jessie Marie does stuff, finished something, and took it to the framer within a week of finishing it. Can you believe it? I can't either. I cannot believe it either. But I dropped it off at the framer uh, this past Monday, and I'm supposed to be able to go pick it up before Halloween, which is mind-boggling. I can't believe that they're able to do it that fast. But uh, I did a pretty simple frame and no glass and no matting, so really, really kind of a simple job. Um, and I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm going to have something FFO'd in time for Halloween this year that I finished. This, it's bananas. It's so unlike me. Um, if you if you are new to this channel, I am terrible at FFO'ing. I'm really bad at it. Um, it's something that I always commit to at the beginning of the year. This year is going to be the year. I'm going to I'm going to finish some stuff and then I and then I don't. But this time I did. So um, when I film next uh, is when. Uh, You'll be able to see this finished and fully finished. Bananas. When I finished in this moment, some people asked me if the finished hangover ever hit. And if I'm being totally honest with myself, it never really did. Because after I finished in this moment, the day after, I was planning a new start. And it was a new start that I was really super excited about. And because I had pushed so hard on in this moment there for like eight weeks straight, um, I was I was just so ready to move on to something else that I never really took an opportunity to, like it, there was never any time to have a finish hangover. That was not the case with Haunted House. I pushed really hard. I finished it very late on Saturday night on October 9th um, and hangover settled in hard <laughs> like really hard um, 
I thought about, okay, well, the other project that I wanted to finish this month was Raven Queen, so I probably should pull that out. Yeah, but I only have a few days before some other thing is planned, so, like, maybe I just won't. I pulled it out, I set it up on the frame, I did 30 back stitches, and that was it. I don't even have it to show you because that was it. Um, yeah, Hangover was slash is bad. I'm kind of still in it a little bit. So, we had this planned new start for October 13th for Dark 13 stitching um, and Dark October stitching. And it was, I'm going to insert a preview here, uh, the Haunted House Sampler by Twin Peak Primitives. This was released as a limited edition and it apparently it disappeared very fast. Um, and then I guess the Twin Peak, they had some, some public pressure um, and so they released it as a PDF after the fact. Emily of Eclectic Possession, she posted about it on her Instagram and she was like, is anybody else into this? And I was like, me please. Um, and so we decided to start up a uh, haunted house sampler sal, which is really just a start along um, for this past October 13th, this past Wednesday. And so I thought, okay, that's what I need. That is exactly what I need to get me out of this funk to get me out of this this finished hangover and to um I mean it was a haunted house so I was literally just trading out haunted houses like this this should be great this should be great and my new start has been a little bit bumpy but I am really really loving it I'm really enjoying it so let me show you um so I made the decision to swap out the DMC for some fancies because why not? Um, it's a very limited color palette. I think there's only like nine colors. And so why not use some fancies? What I maybe should have done was use my color in cotton because I just, I, I just never pull my color in cotton and I really, really need to um, because I have all those threads. But I went general arts. And so here's my thread palette sort of and there's a whole lot of things we got to talk about with this uh, but so there's my threads and let me go ahead and show you my start so far and the needle minder says it's too peopley outside uh, I can't remember the name of the shop that I got that from but if I recall it I will link it in the description box below um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can remember. Snarky something. Anyway, um, so my fabric here is a 40 count Newcastle linen in old linen by XJU Design. I auditioned a whole bunch of fabrics, a whole bunch of different things, uh, and eventually settled on this. Yes, I do have some stitching over here. I had started Barbara Anna's Portuguese bird sampler on this fabric, and I had converted <laughs> This is a bit ironic. I had converted the DMCs called for to fancies, to hand eyes, and I was not loving my conversion. This pale blue up here disappeared on the fabric. Um, some things just, they just weren't working. The color palette was not cohesive. It didn't make sense. I UFO'd this project because of it. Um, and so now here we are. And I'm working on this piece <laughs> and uh, I'm having some thread issues having done a conversion myself so maybe that's my problem maybe I need to stop doing conversions but anyway so that is um that is my start and I think it's working out now I think I'm I think I'm fairly happy with it okay so the house is done in these two close but not the same more steely blue grays and so for one of them I pulled wrought iron and for the other one I pulled wrought iron <laughs> so you can see that they are two very different skeins but with the same color so I thought okay well that actually kind of works because they are beautiful bluey grays 
close but not the same so that 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 could be really great so I sit down to start stitching this and the the big old leafy flower this guy right here of which there are like 20 some odd 24 of them I think around the whole thing okay so if you get the PDF of this pattern it works on pattern keeper which is phenomenal it's so great and you need about 3,000 stitches worth of that particular color for the whole thing it's one of the colors in the house and it's in those it's in those flowery things I can get about 3,000 stitches on 40 count out of a skein of general art sampler threads but I thought what if I don't have enough what if I run short part way through the house so it was supposed to be this darker of the two what if what if I don't finish the house or what if I get halfway through one of those flower things and I run out if I order another skein of wrought iron who knows what they're gonna look like who knows what it's gonna look like this could be problematic. This could not, this could be, this could be bad. And these are the only, only two that I have. And I'm not sure which one I got more recently. Um, so this could be bad. So I thought, okay, well, let me, let me go back to the drawing board and let me pick something else for the flowery bits around the border because I like these two together for the house. I think that's cool. <laughs> so I go to my thread stash and I think, you know, what would be really cool is like a maroon because maroon that's kind of my jam for fall I mean hello um, it's an October thing it's a Virginia Tech thing so I stumble on my cinders and I have three different dye lots of cinders I have one that is very berry colored I have one that is more grape colored but partially used and I had this one and there next to the anchor black, you can see the difference. But stitched up, you can't see the difference. You can't see the difference very much. Um, and I was worried that it was too dark. The called for is this lovely medium dark gray. And mine, oh, twist it around, looks almost black. So I was afraid it was too dark. So I post a poll on Instagram and I'm hemming and hawing and I'm thinking I'm going to have to rip out. And the vast majority of you kind of agreed that it's okay, that it's a little dark and that it looks good. So I went with it. And then I remembered that Pattern Keeper is very cool. You can change the colors and have a look at the mock-up and see what it, what it would look like, kind of, sort of, with the new colors and I like it with the dark my only hang up still is that that cinders is so dark that I wonder if I should just stitch with black and save that cinders for something else because I get out of a length I get two stitches that are a little bit paler red and you can't see them you can't really see them I can see them when I'm up close you know stitching with my lights on and everything but anyway so there's that debacle then Let's talk about the oranges. So there are three oranges called for. And so I pulled carrot, fragrant cloves, and bittersweet, thinking that that was a pretty nice progression. Well, my carrot and fragrant cloves are really close together. They don't look it in the skein, but stitched on my fabric, they looked, they looked almost identical. And that just wasn't going to work for me. Um, I just wasn't a fan of that. So I ripped out the fragrant cloves and decided to use the bittersweet instead. So we get really nice, really nice difference in color there. Um, what's the word I'm like? Contrast. There we go. Um, and so then I was like, well, what am I going to do for this palest, yeah, palest orange? That palest orange is used for a total of 24 stitches in the whole pattern which I wouldn't have known if I wasn't using Pattern Keeper, but if you're stitching this thing, don't fret too much about that palest orange because 24 stitches. Yeah, um, so I'm probably just gonna use the Bittersweet again for those pieces. It's not gonna make a difference. It's not gonna matter at all. 
So hopefully that's it for, <laughs> for my my hangups with this. Yes, I'm using Buckeye Scarlet. I don't like it, but I'm doing it because I needed a good, I needed a red, so it's fine. I don't even like saying it out loud. Anyway, uh, so that is my uh, Halloween sampler. Haunted house sampler, excuse me. And I am, I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. I'm also really enjoying looking at the hashtag on Instagram and everybody else's starts. Um, at the different fabrics that people are using and the color changes that people are, oh, it's so much fun. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, so please, if you are at all interested in that, jump, jump in with us. Come stitch with us. Very cool. So, um, and that, like, like with everything, it's just a start along. We're just, we're just starting it together. No deadlines for finishing. I know that would check most people out if there were any deadlines. Um, okay. So that's kind of it as far as what I have worked on. Um, I'll talk plans very briefly here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I know that I'm going to be working on Haunted House Sampler through this weekend. Um, I have a new start on Monday, which I'll talk about once we get there. Um, once I get to that part in, in the stash. Um, I'd like to work on Raven Queen, but I don't think I'm going to be able to finish Raven Queen this month. I think I have too much to do and not enough time to do it um, in order to be able to see Raven Queen finished this month. But I am going to work on her a fair bit and get as far as I can and go from there. As far as some other Dark October stitching, there are so many things that I want to work on. October by the Cricut Collection, Thine is the Trick and the Treat. I have a small primitive needle that I'd like to start, Kindred Spirits. Um, Poison Garden would be really great to work on this month. I just have so many things. And there's never enough time. Never enough time in October. So we'll see. How's that? Uh, we'll see. I will be back to film after I get Haunted House back, um, before Halloween itself. So I can talk, you know, then I'll have an idea of what I did and go from there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it as far as plans are concerned, which is highly unusual for me, but, um, that's okay. That's all right. It's all good. So let's get on to some stash. I've got some fun stash stuff. And this stash has been hanging out in this room, piling up. So there are some, probably some things in here uh, that I forgot about. So let's get going. We're going to start with some fabrics. Um, I got a hunk of um, 32 count flax Belfast from Traditional Stitches um, because the Farmhouse Christmas series, I needed some, some flax to finish that up. So um, this is a fat quarter. I think that's enough to do the last six blocks. So, got that. That's probably the most boring thing. I took more of the boring things out. Um, some fun fabrics. I bought some fabrics from Derek and Christian over at Fortnite. I don't know if that's focusing. I don't think it is. Fortnite fabrics. I will be sure to link them in the description box. I got some beautiful 40 count linens. Just some stash linens, no plans for these, um, but I wanted to I wanted to try out their linen. So this is Sandy Bottom. That's just a looks like a salvage thread. Anyway, gorgeous. Just a light neutral with some some tanny brown bits. Beautiful. And then I also got shark fin and both of these are a uh, fat quarter of 40 count newcastle and shark fin is like a bluey gray also very light modeling but i dig it i dig it a lot so just to show you the difference between the two yeah gorgeous though huh I know that Julie, uh, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, she has talked about um, f stitching on Fortnite 40, Fortnite 40 count, and um, has some good things, so I thought I'd give it a try myself. Uh, next, we'll get into some stitchy kindness. Um, I 
I saw, this was, this was a long time ago. Um, let me think. June. Yes, June. <laughs> um, I saw everybody getting their rainbow boxes from Black Needle Society and somebody showed the pattern. So I put the call out on Instagram and I said, if anybody has this and doesn't plan to stitch it, I would happily buy it from you. Um, and I had several of you who, who were willing to share it with me, but the first one was Mandy. Um, and so I will link her channel below. You should totally be checking out Mandy. Um, she has some like fabulous finishes fairly regularly. She finishes some big stuff too. Um, so she sent this super cute little card along with the pattern, which is the Be Kind by Stitch Robia. And for a couple of years now, I have ended my videos with As Always Be Kind. And this says Be Kind Always. Yeah, it's it's like my sign. So yeah, so I need to stitch this and, and set it up here. Um, and at the risk of um, kicking myself later, this doesn't look like too terribly a huge stitch. Stitch count is 121 by 173. That's not terrible. It's not huge. So... That would be just a lot of fun to have up. But did she stop there? No, she did not. She sent along a piece of 40 count. 40 count is not her jam, but she knows it is mine. This is coloring cotton driftwood. Is that not stunning? That's so beautiful. Mandy, thank you so much. That was, that was so awesome. And I need to start that this year. Okay, um... Several of these things are, I needed to buy some threads and so I thought I would throw a chart in too because threads should not travel alone. So we have Night Walk Down by the Blue Flower. Yes, I know. I know. I should have already started this by now. But I have this weird thing about like collecting everything that Janine does um, and not starting or stitching it yet. Yet, though. That is the operative word. This is beautiful. I love this. Janine is a genius. Um, this popped up on my Instagram and I I had to track it down. So this is Prayer School or Garden Verses. And I think it's... Yeah, it's this one here. It says, He who plants kindness gathers love, but you know I'm going to change that. To she who plants kind? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe whosoever plants kindness? Maybe. Maybe that. But I love all three of these. All three of these I would really like to stitch. So, that's Garden Versus. Um, and it's in original cardstock form, which I love. Uh, Y'all remember me talking about Christmas Quaker Balpool and how I was trying to find all the Christmas Quakers to try to prevent myself from stitching that one? We have this one from Leela's Studio, Holiday Quaker. Plus, I mean, how great would it be to have this one and Halloween Quaker together? Mm -hmm. Have I started Halloween Quaker? No. Not yet. Um, everything in here, like, has a story. Has a little story. <laughs> if you've been with me a while, you know me. Um... I talked about going to get the fabric for Kinto Akuto up at In Stitches in Alexandria. Can't leave with just one piece of fabric. How about come into my garden by Blackbird Designs? Since we got there like roughly 15 minutes before closing, I had to be quick. And so this was on one of the racks pretty close to checkout. And so I was walking through and I picked it up to get along with my fabric. But I also love this a whole lot. Yeah, okay. Uh, this I get uh, through 3L Threads. It's the Let's Talk from Hands On Design series. Um, and this is Summer. Um, my first Owl Forest Embroidery Kit. I know, y'all have feelings about it. It's fine. Um, this is Zmei Gorinich. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly. 
but it's the it's the cool dragon looking guy. Um, Heather at Link is my homeboy. We are going to start this together at some point. Heather, we probably should pick a date. Um, but this came with all the goodies, including all of their beautiful threads and a needle and needle minder. I'm just showing you this very quickly because this is a fairly old kit. Um, several of you I'm sure have seen it. It's a 32 count Belfast linen. Um, vintage Sahara, I think. I don't, I don't remember that for certain, but anyway, fabulous kit, super fun. Um, I ordered it directly from the Owl Forest Engl English website, um, which I will link down below uh, if you are interested in their kits and would highly recommend. I haven't even stitched with it yet and I'd already highly recommend it. All right. I also picked up Beezy Spring from Cottage Garden Samplings. She has a new series going, but um, a few of them get me and a few of them I'm like, eh, I could pass. Uh, but this one, a thousand percent I would like to stitch. So cool. So very cool. Charted in DMC with a little bit of chamomile. Very fun. Um, Teresa Kogut, come, into, come to the garden. For this guy right here. I may just have to stitch that just on his own. But honestly, I like the whole thing. So beautiful. So beautiful. Okay, this one is funny. Um, so, getting ready to go to bed. Doing the late night Instagram scroll. <laughs> as you do. Uh, and I sat up in bed. To look at this further and I got this a little while ago but I mean jaw hit the floor set up whole oh goodness expletives were were expressed whispers of course to not wake the baby but um, <laughs> yeah Unbelievable. Is is this not just stunning? Jane Hopkins, 1875, by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. I have said to my husband previously that it's dangerous for me to watch Brenda and Laura, uh, Brenda and the Serial Starter. It's dangerous for me to watch their floss tube, but I did this week. I watched their, their latest. And they're start talking about starting this on Christmas Day. I'm tempted. I'm tempted to join along with that. She's big. 217 by 290. Mm. Everything in me wants to get the 103s and try them out. Um, since Brenda talks about them. We'll see. We'll see what happens with this. But, ugh. I mean, just... Stunning. I need to get further along in my other hands across the seas before before I jump in on that, but um, I managed to squeak in under the wire for What Remains by Blackbird. Um, I kept, every time I thought, I need to go, I need to go get that, I need to go get on that, I was in the midst of something and I couldn't. And then one day, out of the blue, I was like, What Remains? I bet I've, I bet I've missed out. And I was able to squeak in under the wire um, and get one of the last printings. Um, from what I understand, this is no longer available. This was created for the 20 year anniversary of traditional stitches um, up in Calgary. And hmm, snuck in uh, to grab a piece. It's a fairly quick thing and I think this has been making the rounds. So I imagine that um, some second hand will be available here before too, too long. But, um, so gorgeous. This may be a Valentine's start. Maybe a Valentine's start next year. We'll see. Um, and I also got the threads and the, uh, the thread keep, which is not here. But I know where it is. Um, but I did get the threads, the thread pack for this one. So, good to go there. Um, okay, next is Expo stuff. So I got a few things from Expo. 
Um, I had to pick up Owlsmore Cottage by Rosewood. And honestly, it's the colors in this one that just, I mean, stop me in my tracks. They're beautiful. So, so beautiful. Yep. Uh, Y'all know the, uh, the Tag Team Geico commercial? I'm obsessed with that commercial. We DVR everything. <laughs> uh, we fast forward through all the commercials, but I always stop for that one. I love it so much. Uh, so Hoop, there it is. Uh, by Heartstring. Had to get this one. I'm going to get some uh, bugle beads to stitch around to add in for sprinkles. Yep. <laughs> Gotta have some sprinkles. Okay. Next is Stitchy Pros. Y'all, she gonna make me cry. Um, first of all, the Forever Timeless Morning Sampler. Y'all, I was not going to participate in the expo, in this most recent expo. And... Holly made a liar out of me. And she also opened the floodgates because I saw this. I had to get it. And then I got everything else. I don't know. But anyway. Stunning. Stunningly beautiful. This would be a really great one to start this month. Maybe. I love that she includes some specialty stitches. Fantastic. Fan. Freaking tastic. This one's gonna make me. Um, okay. So she released Never Apart, which is um a cat and dog morning sampler. <laughs> a furry fur baby morning sampler. And she said that she was thinking of Thor and Lincoln, uh Julie's Julie's Lincoln. Uh, while she designed these. So you know I had to pick this up. Um, I'm going to start this on, on New Year's Eve on December 31st. Uh, and his ashes and his picture and this are all going to hang out together. Maybe this will go on his, on his ashes box. Maybe. I'll have to measure it. Um, his box isn't very big, so... <laughs> oh. Yeah. Holly, thank you. Uh, this is just... Uh, we got a freebie. A sunflower cat. Um, this one was done by Top Knot Abby. Um, that's where I got all of my... All of my expo stuff. Uh, and... Oh, so cute. So cute. Um, elegant Lace. Works by ABC. Stunning. I have a piece of fabric in mind for this. Um, I have to I have to play with it a little bit because it's a thirty six count, which is not typically my jam. Um, <laughs> that's ironic. All this top knot stuff. Uh, but um, yeah. So I'll have to play with it. I'll have to stitch on it and and see. But. Beautiful. Okay, here's here's the last thing that um like between Stitchy Pros, between Holly and this, I was a goner for, for Expo. The Moonlight Sampler. And this is what I am starting on Monday. Monday is Thor's birthday. And so I'm going to stitch this because this dog, I think it would be really easy to crop his tail and his ears and make him into a little chubby Thor. Um, yep, yeah, I think so. And I mean, this is stunning anyway. So many people have started this already and I just, <sighs> looking at it, it's so beautiful. Um, and I'll read you the verse. It says, Though my soul may set in darkness, it will rise in perfect light. 
I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. Yep, gorgeous. Stunning. Um, I have to pick fabric for this. I think I may... Yeah, I'll have to pick fabric for this. I was thinking that I might use that fabric that I had originally started um, Antong Ufendal on because I do think I am going to switch that fabric. But I think it would be it would be fitting um, to put this project with kind of a little bit Thor on there. I think that would be fitting. But I'll have to play with that. Um, pull threads and whatnot and take a look. Um, and that brings us to the project bags because that will live in this project bag that I got from Vicky at Stitch and Button. And she included this sticker, I'm assuming, um, and a little project card. And then she always does these gorgeous zipper pulls. So yep, I thought I thought this would be perfect for for that design. Butterflies and uh, moonlight samplers more moths but still so Danny and I have um, we have like a personal fun budget um, each month that um, we kind of let ourselves spend um, and I spent mine on October 1st this month <laughs> because what had happened was um, the brass button um, she has her updates, Jennifer, she has her updates on the 15th and 30th of every month. And, um, so the September 30th update came with this one. One of Baby Does Stuff's favorite toys is this cloth sloth. Say that five times fast, I dare you. Um, and I just could not even, I could not even... So there's that, and it came with this cool little mummy guy zipper pull, and then mummy fabric. Oh my good grief, this is beautiful. So I had to pick up that. So a Halloween project is definitely going in here. Yep. Um, and then on October 1st, I was on a hangout and uh, Susan, Vintage Owl Lady, um, she posted this up and I said, do I need to get this bag? And I don't know why I asked fellow stitchers if I needed to buy something because I know what the answer is. Maybe I was just looking for somebody else to say, yes, you need to buy that. Um, so I snatched this up as fast as I could. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? How cool is this bag? So cool. And then um, her zipper pull is the little cat. So cute. And then the inside fabric is also insane. So I think Moonlight Sampler might go in here. Maybe. We'll see. Um, so yeah. Well, oh, love that. Love that. So, so pretty. So that is my budget <laughs> for this month. Um, gone, which is okay. It's okay. I need to I need to slow my roll on the project bags, but if if Jennifer and Susan don't stop, I'm gonna be in trouble. And Christmas is coming. Like I need to stop buying myself things. But anyway, <sighs> so um, yeah. So that's that's the end of the haul. Uh, that. <laughs> has got to be it for a little while. <laughs> um, so we'll see what happens November 1st. Anyway, uh, so I think that that's going to bring me here to the end of this. Um, this took a little longer than I was expecting, but hey, I had a lot of stuff piled up here. Uh, and so I'm really hoping to get back to filming. I mean, every two weeks would be the dream. That would be the dream. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. So everybody, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for your continued support of me and my channel. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I hope that you're stitching. 
I hope that if you're at retreats this weekend, I hope that you're having a blast. Have a little fun for me. <laughs> and um, I will, I'll see you guys, I'll see you next time. As always, be kind. Bye, y'all.